Otis and the Tornado, written and illustrated by Lauren Long, voice recording by Stephanie Perrin. Life was calm on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. It was summer, the sun shined bright, the birds chirped, and after all the work was done, Otis and his friend the little calf liked to play. They would gather all their farm friends for a grand game of follow the leader. They would take turns being the leader as they marched along. Otis would go first, puff, puff, puffy, chuff, followed by the little calf, who would bound ahead, bawling all the while. Soon the horse would trot to the lead with a neigh, neigh, as his hooves clip-clop, clip-clop. Finally, the ducks would waddle to the front with a chorus of quack, 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 quack. They all follow the leader, up by the apple tree, around the barn, down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, beyond the cornfield, across the meadow, and along the banks of Mud Creek. What a fun crowd they were. Everyone was so friendly, except the bull. The bull was nobody's friend. When he was not in his pen, he was kept in a pasture all by himself. If any of the other farm animals got close, the bull would stand at the fence and snort and snarl and huff hot air. Suddenly, with a burst, he would run back and forth along the fence. Then he would stop and glare at them, like a statue, never moving a muscle except to flare his nostrils. The bull did not like anyone, and everyone was afraid of him. Once Otis tried to make friends with the bull, he took him a shiny red apple from the apple tree and invited him to play. But the bull snorted and snarled and glared at Otis. Then he stomped his hooves in the dirt and charged. The bull slammed into the fence just inches away from where Otis stood. From that day on, Otis stayed clear of the bull all together. One day, the farm skies began to swirl and turn dark. The winds blew and the rain came down. The animals in the barn grew restless and jittery. The skies tumbled and turned, turned and tumbled. Otis didn't mind the rain, but there was something different about this storm that he could feel deep down in his pipes. All at once, the wind stopped blowing, not even a breeze, and the rain disappeared. The sky turned a strange shade of green and the farm fell completely still. The only sound Otis heard as he puff puffed toward the barn was the farmer shouting in the distance, It's coming fast! Get down in the cellar! The farmer was in such a hurry that he had no time for the animals. What was all the fuss about? Otis wondered. Then he turned and saw something that rattled his frame and shook his fenders. It was a tornado. And it was heading straight toward the farm. What would happen to all the animals locked in the barn? Otis sprung into action. He nudged the latch of the little calf's stall until the door swung open. Next, Otis freed the pig and the sheep. The winds howled closer. He stretched to unlatch the horses and the cow's doors at the same time. Click, clack, the animals were free. They followed Otis out of the barn and into the swirling winds. They followed him down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, beyond the cornfield, across the meadow, over the bank, and down into Mud Creek. Tucked down at the lowest part of the farm, Otis, the little calf, and all of their farm friends felt safe. Otis sighed with relief. Oh, now they just had to huddle together and wait it out. But just as they squeezed close and tight, Otis heard an awful bellowing cry, the sound of a large creature in trouble. The bull! He was locked in his pen. From the safety of Mud Creek, Otis saw the tornado speeding in, a t in the terrified animal's direction. Lightning crashed, the tornado howled, the bull screamed, and in a flash, Otis was gone. He raced across the meadow, putt puff, puffity chuff, beyond the cornfield, past Mud Pond and up the rolling hill to the bullpen. Otis found the bull tucked under the shed, shaking in fear. Otis tried to unlatch the gate. It was locked. He slammed his head onto it. 
The gate shook but held firm. Otis rammed it again. The gate teetered. The bull wailed like a baby. Otis spun around, threw himself in reverse, revved his engine, and charged backward into the gate. Crash! The gate shattered into pieces. Otis shook himself off, gave the bull a friendly chuff, and peeled out. The bull followed Otis down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond and beyond the cornfield. The tornado roared like a freight train as they crossed the meadow, and just as Otis and the bull dove from cover over the bank and into Mud Creek, the tornado touched down, narrowly missing them. Otis, the little calf, the bull, and the farm friends ducked their heads and closed their eyes. They never heard such a fury or felt such a rage, but they were all safely tucked down in the Muddy Creek's bed at the lowest part of the farm, and they stayed huddled there until long after the tornado had passed. They came out only when it was calm and the sun shined bright and the birds began to chirp. They found a farm that needed great repair. But when the work was all over and it was time to play, the farm friends discovered they had a new playmate. This one snorted and stomped his hooves in the dirt. He flared his nostrils and huffed hot air. But instead of a snarl and a glare, he wore a happy grin and a friendly gaze, and he took his place in line with Otis and the little calf in a grand game of Follow the Leader. The End <laughs>